the subjects of my poetry have always been very diverse, from the dark night of the soul to light verse, absolutely silly nonsense verse, which I love. I've just had an essay on light verse published in a top drawer literary magazine, and that was very gratifying to have my thoughts about that, but I write light verse. I've got two books of light verse right now that I'm trying to get published, so I would do that. Well, let me dig in on that. Tell me a little bit about the article and what your thoughts were on light verse that you just had published. Oh, the, well, <clears throat> let's take, um, in the 1890s, a fellow by the name of Gillette Burgess founded a literary magazine in San Francisco called The Lark. Now, Gillette Burgess, if you were to look him up, he is famous for one poem. <clears throat> um, the Purple Cow. I never saw a purple cow. I never hoped to see one. But I will tell you anyhow, I'd rather see than be one. Now, I'll tell you two things about that poem. One is that it was really hard to write. And even though Burgess, now this magazine was founded in San Francisco, I can't remember if I mentioned that, um, professed to loathe the fact that he became famous for a bit of light verse and not his serious verse. That was an act. The Lark was full of light verse, two or three or four. I have half of the total issues ever published. And I've looked through there in amazement. And he kept at it and kept at it. And he realized just how difficult light verse is. W.H. Auden commented on how difficult it is. Joe Parisi, for 20 years, the editor of Poetry Magazine, he considers it much harder to compose than serious lyrical verse. One false step, and the whole thing falls apart. Um, and <clears throat> then I started thinking about it. Well, oh, the other thing about the purple cow, by one estimation, by 19... 15, I forget where it, it's in the article, <clears throat> it was estimated that two-thirds of all Americans had heard the poem and about half of all Americans could recite it by heart. One little bit of light verse. And if you stop and think about it, light verse has been around forever. Take um, all of Aristophanes' plays. They're poetry, okay? Um, uh, Lysistrata is absolutely hysterical. How to stop this endless war with the, with the Spartans? Well, the, the Athenian ladies and the Spartan ladies get together and they come up with the idea. We're going on a sex strike. And the lines from Lysistrata where they're executing this business are absolutely thigh slappers. Um, <clears throat> the men all get these severe cases of priapism. Well, guess what? They can't put their armor on <laughs> with, with that condition. That's pretty funny. Now go back even earlier to Iliad. In book one of Iliad, you have Zeus and Hera in a quarrel up there. Now this could be right out of the honeymooners. It is funny. And Hera gets the best of her, the better of her man. 1925, the New Yorker magazine is founded as a, quote, sophisticated humor magazine. At different times, they had on staff, salaried, uh, Ogden Nash, Phyllis McGinley, and Dorothy Parker, three of the greatest writers of life verse in American history. And when's the last time you read a, a, the New Yorker now publishes only two poems per issue, only two, and it puts out 50 issues. That's 100 poems per year. Some of them are, or, you know, poems from long dead people, you know, not necessarily new ones. When's the last time that you could remember reading a bit of light verse in The New Yorker? No, it's always very heavy, no, very all, contemplative. So all the college professor walking his, his uh, Irish setter on the college green and the deep thoughts that he's having while that, you know, I mean, it's th that kind of stuff. And um, so my, my essay runs in... Um, it's called The Ancient and Honorable Art of Light Verse. And I just posed the, problem, the, the issue. And I invoke 
scholars, serious people saying, why is this? John Updike, John Updike wrote light verse and he complained that it was dying and why the heck is this? <clears throat> so that issue of Catamaran Literary Reader in which my essay appears came out middle of December, about the time we, we last sat down here. On December 30th, the post-holiday issue of The New Yorker comes out. It's called The Cartoon Issue. Two poems, one by the late Phyllis McGinley and one by the late Dorothy Parker. So I wrote the publisher, Catherine Seegerson at Catamaran, and I said, did you have any idea what a potent force you are in the world of letters? And you forced the New Yorker to dive into the vault and pick up a couple of old verses by two of the masters of that. 